So let's finish with a quiz. I remind you that you may want to pause the video to think about these questions. Some of them are tricky or involve a little bit of calculation. So first point, the number of adjustable weights in a convolutional layer with 10 filters of size 5 times 5 times 3, followed by max pooling in a neighborhood of 2 times 2, is 750, and I don't count the biases. Do you think that this is correct? And yes, this is correct. The number of weights is 10 times 25 times 3, so it makes 750. The max pooling stage afterwards has a fixed neighborhood. There are no free parameters, so the answer 750 is correct. Second claim. The number of weights in a convolutional layer does not depend on the size of the xy dimension of the input. If you think that is correct, raise your hand now. And yes, this is correct. The number of outputs of a convolutional layer with 10 filters of size 5 times 5 times 3 followed by max pooling in a neighborhood of 2 times 2 cannot be larger than 750. 750 was the number in the first question. If you think it is correct, raise your hand now. And no, this is not correct. The number of outputs depends, of course, on the xy dimensions of the input layer to that corresponding layer. Okay, next point. A deep convolutional network with a sufficient number of filtering and max pooling layers is also invariant under rotations of the image. If you think that is correct, raise your hand now. And no, this is not correct. Imagine that the best filters that have been learned are all vertical filters. So they detect vertical edges of this, of this form. But now if I turn the image, I would need, for example, tilted, tilted edges in the range of, for example, 20 degree or 25 degree or 45 degree. Now, we could impose rotation invariance as an additional constraint. So we say that if we find a vertical edge, then, then of course, there should also be 45 degree and 22 degree and so forth. But this is not imposed in the standard deep convolutional network. Next point. You have a data set of standard portraits. Think of passport photos on white background. Global translation invariance is a good inductive bias for this data set. Think about this. If you think it's correct, yes, you raise your hand. And no, this is not correct. It's centered portraits. So there is no reason that we should have shift invariance over a large distance. Now, Locally, some faces, even though it's centered, some faces might be just a little bit larger than others or a little bit broader or different broader features. That means locally edge detectors might be the same. And in fact, local features are good features for this. But this additional aspect of convolutional layers that says we, we are looking really for translation invariance over uh, large distances, that's not the case here. Final question. Pooling by averaging, which is one of the possibilities, pooling by averaging over a rectangular neighborhood is a special case of standard deep multilayer networks with feedforward architecture, whereas max pooling is not. Do you think that is correct? If so, raise your hand now. 
And yes, this is correct. So averaging is just a feed forward operator. If I average over five pixels, that means I take a weight of forward weight one over five for each of the five connections and zero for all, all other feed forward connections. So that's possible. Max pooling is not. Max pooling would require some kind of lateral interactions between the units, similar to, to what we have seen in a soft max output layer. So a standard deep multi-layer network with standard feed forward architecture structure does not include max pooling. 